In this short video I'm going to describe an instrumented pile load test. Uh, that is we're going to perform a static pile load test and we're going to strain gauge down the length of the pile to determine the shaft distribution and end bearing capacities. It all starts in the workshop. We'll bond uh, strain gauges to short lengths of high yield bar and in this situation we'll put a temperature sensor on the bar as well. Once the strain gauge bridge and the temperature sensor is wired up it's then encapsulated for waterproofing and is ready to go onto the rebar cage. The strain gauge bars are attached to the reinforcement of the pile at predetermined locations along the length of the pile. The cabling is secured to the reinforcement and routed to the pile cap. The reinforcing cage with strain gauges and cables attached is then lifted vertical ready to be placed into the pile. The reinforcing cage is lowered into the pile. Note the excess cable from the strain gauges uh, coming to the top of the pile. And we're nearly there. Once the cage was installed and the pile formed up and for suit to a height suitable for the static load test, the strain gauges and temperature sensors were connected to a data logger. We're going to record the temperature profile and the stress development in the pile during the curing process. The data recorded during the curing process is uh, downloaded and this enables us to establish a baseline value for, for stresses in the pile before we commence loading. The downloaded data is plotted up and here is a graphical representation of temperature, temperature profile uh, at the various depths and also ambient temperature um, while curing. And here we're seeing the strain development at the various locations along the pile shaft. I have to apologise to Austral for putting their beam on upside down, but the lifting points fouled with the tie-down whalers, so upside down it was. Um, so there we're, we're set up, ready to go. The I like to use six jacks, or I like to use multiple jacks, just, just from the simplicity of uh, handling the jacks and placing them, rather than having one large heavy jack, I tend to use multiple jacks. You can see the displacement sensors on timber beams, uh, the strain gauges and everything connected up, and back to the um, trailer with the data acquisition and uh, control computer in it. So the hydraulics are controlled by a computer so this uh, allows for very precise loads and ramps and unloads and holds and the test runs quite smoothly. You can see the cables from the strain gauges coming out of the top of the pile there just underneath the hydraulic cylinders and going into a black box there underneath the test. Inside that black plastic crate is a HBM strain gauge amplifier and this is a high resolution 22-bit strain gauge amplifier with carrier frequency excitation. Uh, this amplifier is very immune to temperature fluctuations and, ha and has a very high noise immunity. This uh, enables uh, ex uh, you know, an extremely stable measurement and it's able to uh, meaningfully measure very small changes in strain. This is an excellent strain gauge amplifier. On all of our load tests a digital level is used to monitor the tension piles and the test pile. So that the test pile recording is just a backup measurement and the tension pile monitoring provides 
early warning if something is going to go astray, but also provides some additional information to the test. It gives a crude uh, load displacement curve for the tension piles. All of the data recorded from the test can be loaded into an Excel spreadsheet and uh, plots and calculated channels derived from that data. So here we have a load displacement curve, so that it's the uh, load cell output against the average displacement for the pile head. And on the right we have a load strain, so the strain, strain can be converted into stress and then you end up with a stress profile for the pile. Well, thank you very much for uh, listening to my presentation and I hope you got something from it.